Well, I'm joined by James Brown, who was, of course, the founding editor of Loader magazine. He went on to do uh, many other things, including Jack and edited GQ. And uh, he now runs the online magazine, um, Sabotage Times. When I started Sabotage, I realised that if we were just going to go down the route of advertising, we'd have to compete with The Guardian, with Google, with Yahoo, with YouTube, with The Times, News International, with, the, with all the magazine companies. For us, advertising, which is the traditional print revenue, was just something we thought we'd just have as the icing on the cake. And we never really thought about it particularly. The only thing that we said about advertising was we would say no to kind of cheap-looking adverts, you know, those sort of things where it's just horrible drawing of a big fat belly. So we've always had really good brands to advertise, um, but it doesn't really make us any money. Where we've built a business is sitting in that space um, where publishers are no longer receiving revenue from brands because brands themselves want to be publishers and brands want to create content, not content about their brand. They just want to house content and put their commercial messages around it. And they want to put it on tumblers that we build for them, on their Facebook, uh, distribute it through Twitter and other forms of social media. And in the last 16 months, we've worked five months for Puma, starting around the African Cup of Nations. And that started off with, can you cover it for us? And we took over their Twitter and the quote from Terence, who is the global head of marketing said never mind the number of tweets look at the fucking figures and just by putting good content on that platform the engagement rocketed because what happens in advertising when you when you run a commercial or a poster campaign whatever you get engagement and it drops off and the beauty of having the digital platforms and the social media is you can send messages out all the time but advertising messages and PR messages aren't always received well. Whereas if you find a load of people who are used to creating video content and cartoons and infographics and writers, which is what we have, um, they're used to engaging with that tone of voice. Is there any particular tweeters that you follow? What we do is we find people on Twitter, invariably they've got 170 followers and they've got a blog and you click through and they're really great writers. And we can then host that blog and just deliver them a lot of traffic back. And what we do is we, we win the work and we give all the writing work to the contributors of Sabotage. And in the last 16, 17 months, we've paid out nearly 150 grand to writers. And often these writers have never been paid before. On the night of the Brit Awards last year, we didn't have anyone covering it, so we sort of crowdsourced some writers through Twitter and we found a woman who had done some really funny tweets, asked her to turn it into an article, which she did the next day. And on the Thursday, I was pitching for the T-Mobile work, and I said, get that woman to send some ideas. And T-Mobile, like uh, through searches, they commissioned 200 stories on the back of what I showed them. And this woman got four stories to write. And uh, so she went within four days of being somebody who'd worked, I think she had a job as a secretary, to being a paid-for writer. Twitter's been really important for Sabotage. We have over 800,000 people visit the site a month. And we don't spend any money on advertising or marketing. We don't have any gambling or porn or any of that. We don't do any celebrity content, really. We review a few TV shows. All of our stories, of which there are now thousands, have been shared constantly through Twitter and Facebook. And it's like having a live focus group when you look at the little window on the front of the homepage that says, you know, just people saying, check this out, this is just like you, or this is shit, or this is great, look at this, or, you know, you can see people sharing it, and it's a, it's so different to doing print, where you have to find out what people like, you know, I was always lucky, my magazines were quite popular, so people would come up to me and say, I really like this, or I like that writer, or I didn't like that, and, but with Twitter, you can just see it live all the time, and it's been the reason, it's been the way that we've shared all the information. It's we've, all of our stories, all our, our audience has grown through people just sharing it. Google Analytics is totally addictive. You can see who, everybody who is reading your site, what they're reading, how long they're reading it for, where they're reading, how many times they've been before. I don't know if you've seen it, but 
real-time Google Analytics. It's like seeing your heart monitor. <laughs> you know, you get I get a text going, put analytics on, there's like there's 400 people on there. Or, you know, when we first started using it, put them on, we've had 17,000 views. But then you forget you've got a website to run. Rather than just thinking I'll write another article or I'll commission another piece or I'll re-nose an old piece, which actually would drive you some more analytics, you're just sitting there staring at this live heartbeat of your site. The people with the money are the advertisers and they're going to pay you direct rather than giving it to a magazine or a newspaper house. You never know what's coming. You don't know if you're going to be doing the social media of a chocolate bar or building a website about barbecues. You know, you, it's, um, it's, fa it's fascinating. It's, it's advertising really, but it's creating content that sits on the advertisers' platforms.